Ruth Denny founded the school on this trust, this element of trust, that if we will just trust that every student is going to come with this passion in their art, that all these other elements will fall into place. It's so beautiful. People search their whole lives to find the place where they're supported and where they're happy and where everything is right. And this just is that place for so many students, especially for me, because of all the love. And it inspires me to be creative is the environment more than anything, as it shows in my art and what I do academically. The environment's very welcoming. I, I don't feel rejected or just completely put away by peers. First, I'd like to acknowledge how honored I am to be able to offer a few observations about one of the most exciting high schools that I've seen in our nation at any place at any time. I came to Houston in 1970 to implement a court order to help desegregate the Houston Public Schools. In the process, I learned that there had been some folks working for a number of years on a concept that would produce a high school of performing and visual arts. The leader of that charge was Ruth Denny, who was head of the uh, drama department at Lamar High School. Also working with her was a very capable and talented lady by the name of Susan Stubbs. Between the two of them, they had dedicated a lot of time and effort prior to 1970 to put together a proposal for such an entity, the entity of course being the High School of Performing and Visual Arts. When I came to Houston, I learned that they'd been working on this concept, and I met with Ruth, and I said, tell me about what you have. And I was intrigued with it for several reasons. One, I believe very strongly that the degree to which parents and students can make a choice in the kinds of programs they would like to have their child exposed to is a, benef uh, is a very strong component in quality learning. The second thing we were looking for, very frankly, were activities that would demonstrate to our community that um, quality learning can be and should be colorblind. I took the concept to the Board of Education and asked, would you support or endorse or allow the creation of a high school of performing and visual arts? And unfortunately, a majority of the board said yes. And so we went about the business of implementing this new program beginning in the fall of 1971. Now, unfortunately, we didn't have a building. And so we, what we utilized, and I never did learn how we uh, uh, took ownership, but we owned an old Jewish synagogue. And I said to Ruth, if you are given this building for your program, can you build an activity there commensurate with your dreams and hopes that, you, that would uh, allow this system to move ahead as, with the second only high school of performing in visual arts in the nation. She said, yes, we can do it. And bless her heart, she did. And the uh, staff that she employed and all the other people who worked with the system to make this a reality turned this into what it is, in my mind, one of the most exciting learning environments uh, in HISD. And so with that bit of introduction, I simply say again, I'm honored to be with you. I thank you. And I thank all of those who've helped make this a reality. Well, I'm thrilled to talk about how I got involved with HSPBA. In 1970, I was teaching at the University of Houston and I kept getting phone calls from somebody named Ruth Denny who wanted to set up an appointment that we could talk about the prospect of a new project for Houston. Well, it was before emails and it was before message machines and we kept playing phone tag. Finally, after two or three weeks, when I came out of my dance studio one day, here was this very, very striking gray-haired woman who said, hi, 
I'm Ruth Denny, and we need to talk. So I ended up visiting with Ruth Denny, who encouraged me to give up my teaching position at U of H for one year and help start HSPVA. At that time, there was no dance per se in public schools. So it was going to be my mission to write a curriculum that would be accepted by the Texas Education Agency so we could have dance equal to music and to theater and to visual arts. So after one year of being at HSPVA, I didn't go back to U of H. I think they've given up my car space at this point, but it was one of the smartest moves I ever made. I think one thing I found at HSPVA is that uh, there were a number of students who were not only fine students and very talented in their art area, but they were just remarkable human beings. Uh, and you know, you can find that at all schools, don't misunderstand me, but I think there was such a concentration of students like that at this school. And I found them very inspiring. I was inspired frequently by the students I had. I think that my years at HSPBA were absolutely the best of my career. Out of, the, out of the four high schools that I taught, that I taught throughout my, I now taught for 37 years. This, this was the one that felt like home, and I was here longer than I was at any other any other school. So, I, it was always neat to to be teaching and then have to go close your door because there were a bunch of tap dancers out in the hall, or or somebody rehearsing with a trumpet, and you think. That's just the way, that's, that's just the nature of the, of the beast, and uh, it made it a fun place. I've read many, many people say they enjoy their jobs, they can't get to work, they, they can't wait to get to work, they're sorry when they have to leave, et cetera, et cetera. And that was certainly my attitude here. I, I uh, without exception, would not wake up and think, oh God, I gotta go to school today. No, I, I would look forward to it. Uh, but because of the students, you know, first of all, and my colleagues and so on. But the students were, were so um, fun to work with, and um, it was hard work, it was long hours, but, but part of that, a big part of that, was just trying to, to keep ahead of these, <laughs> these great students. One thing that's interesting, I think, I think uh, I was here 23 years, I think without exception, I don't care what time I got here in the morning, there were already students here practicing. I don't care what time I left at night, and some, some nights I'd be here till 9 p.m. just getting paperwork done or whatever. And, but I don't care what time I left, there would be students here practicing. And the custodians, I would hear them talk, they would have a time every night just shooing, finally at 11 or whatever, shooing the kids out of the building. <laughs> and, um, and that kind of attitude on, uh, on the part of the student body is, is, is fun. I taught here, I think, um, maybe 13 or 14 years, right? I started in the old, old school at the synagogue, and then we moved over here. And um, the great thing about teaching at PVA is the kids, the dedication, the passion, the fearlessness of which they present themselves, the way they present themselves, to me was just great. I like to quote a, um, a lyric from Roger and Hammerstein's The King and I. It's an old and ancient saying. How does it go? Let me think about it. Oh, it's a very ancient saying, but a true and honest thought that if you become a teacher by your pupils, you'll be taught. And as cliched as that sounds, it really is true because the kids here will try anything. They will jump over the cliff in an artistic project if they think it'll be wonderful and they can succeed been here for 40 years and I've probably learned a lot more from the people, the students I've had than I've been able to impart to them. And I think that's true. I mean, you know, I can't summarize every, every little thing I've learned, but you learn, le part. you learn lessons about how to deal with people, you learn lessons about how to live your life, and you learn lessons of, uh, you know, what will and won't work as a teacher, both in terms of how you handle people and, and what you teach and so forth. So it's been a great experience in that regard. Also, um, just the antics of the kids sometimes uh, would make you laugh. Um, I remember uh, once in the, I guess, sort of late 80s, 
had this group of uh, media students who uh, thought that it would be interesting and fun for them to paint my podium. And for a period of, of several weeks, uh, the students working in relationship with the head custodian, um, my podium's color changed weekly. It went, every, went from every color from blue to black to polka dot. And the coup de gras is uh, one day I was heading out for school. I have no idea how they knew this, uh, how it came about, but the podium ended up on my front doorstep. <laughs> uh, so that, that was just sort of, I guess you could say, um, a fun side of these kids. It was uh, harmless. Uh, we still got everything done that we needed to get done so far as class was concerned, but you could also um, find those moments where you could have a little fun with them. I think one of the funniest things that ever happened during on, you know, kids are kids no matter what. They're going to try anything they think they can get away with sometimes. And one day, the phone rang here it was early in the morning, and I asked the phone, I school for the performing arts, and this, this, a very immature boy said, Miss Jones, this is, this is so-and-so's father, I won't, I won't give a name, and I just want you to know that I won't be there today. <laughs> so he told Hilton himself, and I said, well, in that case, I think I better call your father because you've got exactly half an hour to get here. And you better hear, be here before second period. And sure enough, he made it. It's more than a school. It definitely gets into your heart. And, uh, and as I said, as an educator, I'm just passionate about someone moving from A to B. I don't care what the discipline is. I don't care what their age is. I love seeing people grow. And I think that's one of the passions that all educators have in common. And then you find your own niche where you feel you can do that most effectively. So I saw that at such high, high ratios and, uh, and proportions here at HSPBA. This was my life for 19 years. I was here, like everybody who works here, five to six to seven days a week and nine to 10 to 12 hours a day. And uh, uh, we do it because we love it. And, and it makes a difference in the lives of these kids and uh, it's been such a pleasure to see where they have gone and, and what they have done and the things they have accomplished and, and I love the fact that they all stay in touch. I have more Facebook friends than I can imagine, most of them students and I, I like that a lot, that's pretty great.